Hey guys, welcome to Cakewalk Cambridge. I'm Aisha and today we're going to start with Chapter 8, Transport and Plants. Um, there are a few concepts in this chapter that you need to know really well. So we're just going to look at those and tell you how you can score your marks. So let's start. Okay, so the xylem and phloem, they're two um, tissues that we have studied before in Chapter 2. You can go back to that and come here, but this is going to be much more detailed. So your, so your xylem forms when a part of the plant stops growing, the cell walls are digested away. And so the xylem and the cells form long elongated tubes called the xylem vessel. Okay, these are impregnated with lignin, which makes it permeable and strong. Okay, the lignin strengthens the xylem. And that is why the xylem, xylem has the capacity to be used as support. It helps support the plant. So basically, the cell contents die in the xylem. The cytoplasm dies to allow the free passageway of water. Um, it is long to carry the water over long distances. It is impregnated with lignin to make it permeable, to make it impermeable and strong. And there are fibers that are present. It is joined from end wall to end wall. So it's a one continuous fine tube. So the um, functions are carries water, carries ions, um, transport of these two, and support. Support is because the um, pressure of the water in the xylem pushes outwards and so it can be used for support. Then we have the phloem. Um, in the phloem, you have the cell contents are the, the cell contents are alive, but the cells lose their nuclei. Um, so um, there are little perforated plates between each um, segment in, in the phloem, and these are called sieve plates, which allow the um, passage of sucrose and amino acids from one sieve plate to another. Okay, so the phloem is used in translocation, um, where it carries sucrose and amino acids from the leaf through the plant. Um, so basically, what you need to know here is that um, every line here carries one mark for your answer. So it's important that you memorize all these individual points. Okay, so I had I had this question for my mock paper, and it was a four mark question to ask the um, functions of the xylem and phloem. So these are the points that were in the mark scheme. So you can memorize them if you want. I mean, you should memorize them. Okay, now you need to also know the location of the xylem and the vessel in the plant. So in the um, leaf, you have the xylem on top and the phloem below. I have this in my mock paper and I made a mistake. Don't make that same mistake. The xylem's on top, the phloem is below. Um, in the stem, you have the xylem on the inside and the phloem on the outside, okay? And the root, again, you have the xylem on the inside, which forms a cross, and the phloem on the outside, which forms like four circular structures outside the cross. Okay, so we've already looked at the structure of the leaf. So you know there's the upper epidermis, palisade layer, mesophyll layer, lower epidermis. Okay, um, when you look at the stem, in the inside you have the pith, um, which is also used for support because it, it um, causes an external pressure. Um, then you have the root cortex, which is this portion. Um, you have the uh, epidermis, which is the outer portion. You don't need to know these two at all, okay? Um, the root here, again, you have your root cortex, which is this place. Um, this is the endodermis. You don't really need to know it. And this is your epidermis again, okay? So just know the location of these three. Um, if you want, print out a worksheet and label it or draw it out yourself for practice at least four times so that you are absolutely clear and when you have to label it, you don't even have to think twice, okay? These can come for like four mark answers to just label the xylem and flow, okay? Okay, the root hair cells. So root, hair, so root cells usually have um, hairs which are like projections on the surface of the root to increase the rate of absorption by increasing the surface area. So there's a greater rate of um, osmosis because um, osmosis is the movement of water molecules um, through a partially permeable membrane. So greater the surface area, greater the rate of absorption and greater the rate of osmosis. And also it increases the rate of um, movement of ions by active transport. Again, increase in surface area means increase in the rate of active transport. So um, now the other la the last points are points that was once in a question that in an IG paper that um, asked me to state the uh, adaptations of a root cell in um, a dry climate. So here, these are your adaptations. So the roots go deep into the soil. They may be extensive. That means they spread out. 
they maintain a low water potential so that water moves from a higher water potential that is the soil to a lower water potential that is the roots by osmosis through a partially permeable membrane and um, this is the last point which is general mentioned in my textbook so when the root hair cells wear out the root tip produces more root hairs okay so yeah so this is your root hair cell you have the cell membrane you have the cell wall the vacuole root hair which will be present and the cytoplasmic nucleus um once there was an mcq that said what um structure is present um in um what structure is not present in a liver cell and a cyto and a root hair cell the answer is chloroplast both don't have chloroplast okay um, it's very easy to forget this because a root hair cell is a plant cell and you automatically correlate plant cells with chloroplasts. But just know chloroplasts are only present in the palisade layer, mesophyll layer and the guard cells. Okay, root hair cells don't have chloroplasts. Um, this is your outside view of a root. This is your root cap, the root tip. More root hairs are being produced as you can see. This is like the magnified version. You have your phloem on the outside and your xylem is the cross. You have the root cortex over here and the epidermis over here. Okay, the pathway of water. This is quite easy, but it comes in a million MCQs, so do not mess this up. So first you have the water moves from the soil to the root hair, to the root cortex, to the xylem, to the spongy mesophyll. So very often, um, so you just need to learn this by heart. There's no real explanation, but it usually moves from out from the outside to the inside of the root hair. Okay, so what you need to do is memorize this because this comes in MCQs where they shuffle this up in the random orders and you're supposed to tick the correct order. So it's always root hair, root cortex, xylem, spongy mesophyll. Always. Okay. Um, now, now they can also give you the, uh, in your theory paper, they can give you the structure of a root hair cell or the root cap as I showed you. And um, they will label the different parts with letters and you are supposed to explain the passage of water. So what you need to do for that kind of question is A, you explain the passage of water. That is, you give this um, formula, like this um, flow, this chain, and after and you write it out, don't put arrows. And after that, you need to identify the letters because you get marks even for identifying, like L, for example, is the root cortex, M is the epidermis. You give that and you have to explain the whole concept of osmosis. You define it and through the cell membrane and you get all your marks okay i've seen this in questions and i've attempted them so talking from experience um now how to investigate the pathway of water you probably do this in your class but because of the pandemic i'm not really sure what you can do so basically you put a plant inside a beaker that contains water with red food color or green food like not green but like red or blue or something and um, every five minutes you use a knife and you cut it cut the stem and you um, can observe that there is um, that the xylem in the cell, you can make out what is the xylem, it becomes red, okay? So, um, so basically when you're looking at this, like when you're looking at that section, this is probably how it will look. When they ask you to label what the xylem is or where, what will be red color, okay? These circles are going to be red. This is going to be red. This is going to be red and this is going to be red. So every five minutes you cut a, a higher section of the stem and you see that the xylem is red. Why? Because water is moving up the xylem. So you keep cutting it and it will go through the plant slowly with time. This can also be used to measure the rate of pathway of water. Okay, pretty easy. Okay, transpiration. That is a very important concept. So basically, as you know, what the, you should be able to state that um, water is transported from the roots to the leaves through xylem vessels, as we already discovered in the second slide of the presentation. So now you need to also be able to define transpiration. So it is the loss of water vapor, okay, from the plant leaves by evaporation of water at the surface of the spongy mesophyll, followed by diffusion of water vapor through the stomata. So let me explain this. So water is taken up by the plant by osmosis. It then moves through the plant. And when it comes to the leaf, there are many air spaces. Due to the heat of the sun and external heat present in the environment, water is evaporated into water vapor. This water vapor travels across the air spaces in the spongy mesophyll and diffuses out through the stomata from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration as a result of their random motion. 
So you should be able to explain this whole process very well and define it. Again, the bold parts are the parts you need to include in your answer, otherwise you won't get full marks. Also, um, very often they ask you the definition of transpiration in an MCQ question, and over there they may not give the same word-to-word -word meaning. Um, one definition I've seen before is when they say um, it is the evaporation of water from um, the stem and leaves of plant cells. So I never really understood why they wrote stem and leaves, but you're, you have to pick that. That is the correct answer from the stem and leaves of the plant cells. Okay. Um, higher the surface area of the cells, higher the number of stomata, and higher the number of spaces, higher is the rate of loss of water vapor because higher is the rate of diffusion. Okay. You just need to know this. It's self-explanatory. Um, so now this is how water moves up the xylem. So water moves up the xylem through the transpirational pull. Now what exactly is this transpirational pull? When a plant is transpiring, it's losing water in the form of water vapor. Okay, so when this water is lost, more water needs to be drawn in to replace the lost water. So this exerts a pull on the water, which pulls the water up the plant. So this is called transpirational pull. pull. And there are cohesive forces between the molecules. So what happens is the molecules form a long chain. So there's a long chain of water molecules that are formed by cohesive forces of attraction between the molecules. And those are those move up the xylem in one chain. OK, so that was basically a transpirational stream. OK, the movement of water to be evaporated. Um, now, wilting occurs when the plant loses too much water by a transpiration and, it is, and the water is not replaced. OK. So now one question long ago was um, that I attempted was why do plants intentionally wilt? And I was lost. I didn't really know how to answer this. So the answer is that some plants initially wilt to delay the onset of death and conserve any remaining water in their system, remnants of water in their system, so as not to lose more water further. OK, so that's your answer. OK, um, so this is just basic stuff. So higher the temperature, higher the rate of transpiration because greater energy for molecules, molecules vibrate faster, uh, gain more energy and so evaporate faster. It's basically about the process of evaporation and movement. Molecules move faster when they have more energy and more energy is provided by a higher temperature. Um, then your second point is higher the humidity, lower the rate of transpiration. This is, so humidity is basically the amount of water vapor in the air, the water vapor held by the air around you. So when it is more humid, there is more water vapor in the air. So that means water vapor can't diffuse from the leaf outside because there is a higher concentration of water vapor outside than inside. And diffusion occurs only when there is a concentration gradient and only when the molecules move down a concentration gradient. So water vapor cannot diffuse when there is high humidity. So the lower the rate of transpiration. And um, another point is that plants in regions with low humidities have sunk in stomata to create a higher humidity to prevent transpiration. So xerophytes that are basically land living plants in dry regions um, have sunk in stomata and their leaves. That is when it's like really deep inside the leaf. This creates a higher humidity around that area. And so trans the rate of transpiration is reduced. Okay, This is a very important adaptation that you need to know for sure. Okay, translocation. This is basically taken from your syllabus itself. Um, so translocation is your major topic again. It is the movement of sucrose and amino acids in the phloem, as we studied earlier, from the region of production, which is the source, to regions of storage or to regions where they are used in respiration or growth, which is the sink. So it's basically a movement of sucrose and amino acids from the source to the sink. You are required to give this whole answer for all your marks. Trust me, it's honestly easy to memorize. You just read it five times, write it down, ask someone to take it up for you, and you'll be good to go. Okay? So now here's the catch. This, you can't ever mention what the source is and what the sink is. Don't do that. Because the source and sink of a plant can keep changing according to climatic conditions. Um, now this has come in an MCQ before. So um, there are four seasons that were given. Okay, one is spring where leaves just start to grow. Then um, autumn where leaves die. Or winter where leaves die. Summer where the plant is. Um, so autumn where leaves are falling. Winter where leaves are dead. And summer where the plant is where leaves have been produced. Um, and the question was when will the roots start to act as the source of energy? The answer is not in winter when the leaves are not there. It is actually in spring when the leaves are growing. Why is it active as a source in spring? Because to grow leaves, growth requires energy and the energy will come from the roots. Okay. 
that's when photosynthesis and everything occurs again. So roots or the tubers are most active as a source of energy in spring, okay, to form new leaves, okay? And this all happens after winter. Okay, so that was basically our chapter. We finished in 15 minutes. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, you can always email me. I'll put down my email below. If I have any useful links, I will send them to you. Um, I hope this helped you. Don't worry, we'll get through this together. Bye. Thank you.